Welcome to the Lifelinks Podcast, a platform to amplify Latina voices, to validate their story, and engage the comunidad worldwide. I'm your host, Consuelo Crosby, and also creator of this content. If you would like to chat about what you've heard here today, then reach out to me through our website at thelinks.com. That's L N double X, or through our Instagram profile at lifelinks. I'd love to listen and engage in whatever you have to say. Hola, chicas. Welcome to another episode of the Lifelinks podcast as we dive into the second to last episode of season three. Did you catch the Instagram post yesterday with all the amazing founders, entrepreneurial and career professional guests that we have had this season and their brilliant products and services? If you have some last minute shopping for others or some life gifting for yourself, Take a look at the post and head on over to our website at thelinks.com, that's L-N-double-X, to read more about them and support their businesses. There's going to be something and someone you love in there. I guarantee it. And just like I promised yesterday, hoping you all caught up with me and my determination to choose myself first, we have a powerful and gregarious guest today. Brenda Amiel. Brenda is the founder of High Vibes Consulting, providing powerful breakthroughs to entrepreneurs to help them eliminate personal blocks and create transformational paths to clarity. And let me tell you, by the end of this episode, you will have mind-blowing clarity. Unless you've already been graced by Brenda's talents, this was a first for me. Now, you may think she stepped right into this career, but her romantic relationships cycled through the familiar pattern of volatility, instability, and people-pleasing, eventually leading to Brenda having traumatic episodes. And that's when she discovered NLP and hypnosis. And within a year, she quit her nine-to-five job to become a master certified NLP, hypnosis, and timeline therapy coach. So welcome, Brenda. Thank you for joining us today. Let's dive into this journey because it is just like pinging along like a pinball game to all the different things that happened in your life. First, lead us up to it with your upbringing and your heritage. My mom and dad are from Guatemala. They came here, I think my mom was 20 and my dad was maybe like 23. They've been in the United States longer than they were ever in Guatemala. Oh, yeah, that happens. Yeah. So they came here to what part of the U.S.? I was born in Bellflower, California. So I grew up in a little town called Los Alamitos. Um, It's near Long Beach, California, Oh, which was a very interesting upbringing because... It's a pretty wealthy white neighborhood. To the listeners, if you can't yeah. see me, I'm clearly brown. <laughs> it's not a tan. Beautifully gorgeous. You yeah. can you can clearly tell I'm brown. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you're in his white suburban town growing up. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I got into cheerleading and it, I was just around white kids. Yeah. And I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with that, but it did definitely cause an identity confusion because mm-hmm. the way I speak, my mannerisms and all these different things were coming from where I was growing up from, which mm-hmm. is like a white girl. Yeah. And I didn't know how to speak Spanish. And so in high school, I would try to fit in with the Hispanic kids, but they would speak in Spanish and I couldn't I couldn't do that. Uh So I couldn't fit in with the Hispanic kids and I'm Uh clearly brown. I don't look like the other one. And so I don't necessarily fit in with the other group. And I just wrote it off at the time as, oh, I'm just a social butterfly. I have friends everywhere. Um, But I think it really hit my senior year of high school when I truly felt like I didn't belong. I got really down 
And I remember I started eating lunch alone at some point. Oh. And I was like, I just want to get out of high school. Like, yeah, it was it was really sad. Sometimes I would go in my car and eat alone because I, oh I was like, I don't I don't have any friends. I can't relate to anybody. Um, and it was really just my own identity crisis of like, am I Hispanic? But I can't speak Spanish, but I look Hispanic. But the way I think and some of my aspirations are heavily influenced by the American culture. So what am I? Am I Guatemalan? Am I American? But I don't fit in with the like regular American. So it was it was a very big identity crisis my senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when a lot of the problems that I had growing up started manifesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so carry it forward. You have this cultural confusion and you're on the fence because you're not really accepted by the Latina culture because of the language and also the identity. But with the white culture, were you fully accepted there? Oh, no, absolutely not. Okay. I mean, I grew up around really wealthy kids and Mm -hmm. um, kids who were getting the first generation of iPhones just because their parents wanted them to have it. So what I saw growing up was a lifestyle of luxury. I saw what you get if you work hard. And I made a choice. I Like, I'm not going to settle for anything else. So you, did your parents come with the intent that they were going to assimilate into the American culture? They very much assimilated. Like, we hardly ever grew up with traditional Guatemalan dishes. I actually don't even know what a traditional Guatemalan dish is. I have no idea. And I'm 30 years old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So now you're floating by your own, you're Mm -hmm. (laughs) eating lunch in your car alone. How does that play forward? That plays forward as I'm going to show you. And so when I got out of high school, I went to go work for a mortgage company um, where I learned how to be a loan officer. And I got licensed really young. And by the time I was 20 years old, I was making $50,000 a year working wow. five to 10 hours a week as a loan officer. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Louder for the people in the back. Be a loan officer. <laughs> well, not right now. <laughs> I guess it's not a good time right now. Get licensed right now for when the rates drop again. Yeah. It was a really good introduction into the business yeah. world because my mentor, mm. she has Mexican background and she owned the mortgage company. And she was just a badass woman. And I was like, I want to be her. She owned this like beautiful $2 million home. She drove the Benz. She wore the Louis. She did it all. And I was like, I want to be her. So you were doing great. You were slaying just like you knew you could. How did you get into the toxic relationships? I was turning 22. I was almost 22 years old and I didn't have much experience. I was super naive and it was totally supposed to be a summer fling. And I ended up being in a relationship with Sky for three years. Yeah. In those three years, he was cheating on me the entire first <gasps> year we were together. And I didn't find out until we moved in together. And because, you know, when you move in together with someone, you finally see their behavior. So then I went to go get tested. And then I found out I had genital herpes. And at this point, I'm what around like 23 years old. And I remember him telling me, no one is ever going to love you again. I get to my really, really low point. A year goes by and I get pregnant. And I remember that was the moment that I I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing? Mm -hmm. What am I doing with this life? I go to the doctor to go get checked and the the doctor comes in and she's like, hey, um, we can't find the embryo. So what that means is that it's probably an ectopic pregnancy. Oh, God. And those are so dangerous. Those are very dangerous. 
And so I immediately start crying because I know what an ectopic pregnancy is. And I'm like, isn't that going to burst my fallopian tube? Can't I lose a fallopian tube? And she's like, yeah, but there's really nothing we can do until your body just kind of like takes care of it on its own. Oh, no so, kidding. They can't operate. They can't do anything. No, they sent oh. me home. I go home about a week later. I'm sitting at my uh, desk because I was working at home from that time. And I feel it burst. <gasps> and it was oh, the my worst God. pain of my life. And I lived about 30 minutes away from, from my doctor's. So I had to get in the car while I'm internally bleeding, get my ass to the hospital. 911? 911. No, no, because the thing that went through my head, I was so broke. The thing that went through my head is I can't afford an an ambulance. Oh my Lord. So I'm going to get in the car and I'm going to drive myself. So I get to the hospital. I walk into the door and I immediately just collapse because finally I'm like, okay, I'm safe. They're going to take yeah. care of me. And within 30 minutes, I was in emergency surgery. So it was oh, very, it was very traumatic, the entire experience. So at that point, I had been diagnosed with genital herpes. I had now gone through an ectopic pregnancy. So everything about my womanhood, I felt like was ruined. Hmm. And I was like, I, there's no way out of this. So I'm going to have to stay with this guy because he was going to ever want me again. So I would say my journey started when I was 25 years old and I was about to buy my first condo that I could not afford at all. Well, you were 25. (laughs) That's amazing. I I don't know how many people have that thought. I was telling him, yeah, I'm like really nervous about this mortgage and it's a new chapter and I'm so excited. And then he made a comment. I can't wait to have um, so-and-so and so -so over for Sunday night football. And something inside of me just finally clicked and was like, is this really going to be my life? I'm really going to go in and figure out how to pay this mortgage. And he's going to bring his friends over to get drunk in my house that I worked so hard for. (sighs) And it just finally clicked. And I was like, oh, I'm done. (laughs) You're out of my life. I'm done. And I think I sent him like a text message right when I closed escrow. And I was like, hey, like, please don't ever talk to me again. I literally blocked him, his family, everybody, and just moved on with my life. You broke up via text? (laughs) At that point, he really didn't deserve any more. It takes a yeah. condo. Oh my lord! Yeah, yeah. It, takes, it takes some serious money for me to oh. realize. Uh, hey, you got to get out of my life. Oh my gosh, that yeah. man! Yeah, no. So the wheels have fallen off. You've gone through a lifetime of lessons before you're even twenty-five. How do you keep on going? I graduated college and I went into the corporate world. I hated it within the first week. I was like, oh God, this is not for me. I love the entrepreneurship life, but I had already left the business and I knew if I went back, it was going to take me like three to six months to even see a deal again. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, therefore, yeah. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't have savings. And so, uh, I was, I just stayed in corporate and I found myself working at Target as an assistant manager where my first year was really rough. (laughs) Really rough. I almost got fired because (laughs) to be honest, I was a horrible leader. Absolutely horrible. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. The way I spoke to people, the way I, I went about just everything. And it's because I was leading through a lot of anger of things that were going on in my personal life, of the cheating ex-boyfriend, of the ectopic pregnancy. All these things were going on while my career was growing. And so as much as as much as you want to separate it, sometimes you can't. Mm -hmm. So I was leading through anger. And when him and I finally split, I finally had... The anger wasn't gone, 
But I finally had the space to actually figure out the type of leader that I wanted to be. And I got really vulnerable. I remember I got really vulnerable with my team. I was leading a team of 75 team members. Oh my gosh. That's not a team. That's like an army. (laughs) At at 25 years old, I had the biggest team in the store with the least experience in management. And I got really vulnerable with everyone. And I said, these are all the things that have been going on. This is what's happened in my personal life. I just want to share with you and I want to apologize for my leadership style. And that opened up the door for them to be vulnerable with me. And I was able to create really strong relationships. So I turned around that store in about a year. It was a $50 million store. And within a year, some of the departments um, had increased sales by 13% on a $50 million store. Nice. All just because of the relationships that I was building. Uh And so then I got opportunities for uh, remodeling stores and managing really big projects, which is how I got recruited into the tech industry as a project manager. Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. And how old are you at that age? I was 27 when I got recruited. (sighs) Mm -hmm. Awesome. Wow. And all while this is happening... Yeah. My personal life is on fire. My professional life started taking off, but then COVID hit. Oh, oh sweet COVID. Ah, oh, that wet blanket of despair COVID. Oh, yes. God. So all of a sudden, and I think this happened with a lot of people. Yeah. All of a sudden, the wave of all my lessons from the non-relationship that I had with my dad at the time from all the things that I had been through with my toxic relationship, with all the things that I had learned from the man that I was engaged to, all like everything just all of a sudden hit at once. And I was like, oh God, what do I do? It's like an avalanche. Oh God. It was an absolute yeah. avalanche. And it was, it was so overwhelming. Oh. And um, I had been going to therapy at that point I had been going to therapy since I was like 12 years old. So at that point, it was like 15 years worth of therapy. Oh, my Lord. There had never been an improvement in my personal life. So at this point, everything hits at once. I'm not going back to therapy because I've never seen results. Mm. So one of my best friends reappears into my life. And she's she's been going on her own journey. Her and I haven't talked for maybe like two or three years at this point. And she just randomly appears, which it's not randomly. Yes. (laughs) It was my unconscious mind creating all of this for me. So she reappears. We have a conversation and she goes, I can see all the fear that you have in your eyes about life. And I immediately started crying because I was, I was scared. Like what, like what's going on? What, What are all these lessons for? I don't know what the purpose of my life is. Why Why did I have to go through all of that? Why me? Why mm-hmm. me? And so she gave me this book called Many Lives, Many Masters by Brian Weiss. And I highly recommend that you read it. Okay. Because that is a book that turned my world upside down. In a good way. In a fabulous way. At the time, it was scary, <laughs> but in a yeah. fabulous way. Because it's a book about traditional psychotherapist dealing with a patient who has chronic anxiety like she cannot even function in society Mm. and he's working with her for 18 months and nothing happened which was so similar to me because I was like I've always suffered from anxiety I get uh, this like wave of fear for no reason and so this book is talking about how she's going through that and He finally said, okay, 18 months, there's no improvement. I'm going to turn to hypnotherapy. And I'm like, oh, yeah, like that's strange. So I stayed up the entire night and read that book. (laughs) I did not put it down. I didn't sleep. And I read that book. I opened the portal. And at that point, I got really interested in hypnotherapy. And my birthday rolled around. And I got really serious about what do I want? Mm -hmm. what do I desire? 
Let me go mm-hmm. back to the little girl who used to dream about yeah. her $2 million house, about her red bottoms, about her bends, <laughs> about her mortgage company, about all these things. What do I desire? Uh-huh. I really had to ask myself that. I remember on my birthday, I, I cut out all the music. I did not listen to music with words anymore. I worked out every single day. I read a book every single day. I meditated for 90 minutes every single day for six months. Oh my God. And I shut out the world. I did this for six months. And all of a sudden, my dream started coming in. And I was like, okay, all the things that I had been through, I'm supposed to help other women who don't know how to get through that because it took me five years to get through that. And when I found hypnotherapy and when I found NLP and when I found timeline therapy, within seven days, I let it all go. All of it. Everything all of it. from the all way it. back when you were 12 forward. All, yep. all the, wow. All, all of my beliefs about money, And that Mm -hmm. I have to work really, really hard for money. I actually went to a past life with that belief. Uh Um, I let go of the belief that I wasn't worthy of love or money. Uh I found out so many things about some of my own past lives. And I found out a lot about the generations of women that I have come from. Who have been so hurt by men Mm -hmm. that they turn into high achievers like I was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Because you say, well, I'm going to show you I don't need you. Right. 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 Still a common (laughs) statement. Oh, totally. Even common advice. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. I still have that energy. I'm still very ambitious. Mm -hmm. I'm the thing is, is that my moves now have nothing to do with proving people wrong. Yeah. And there's a a waste of energy. That is a waste of energy. And I will say the energy that I put into my business now, Mm -hmm. all of these things are just very, very different. The way I move, the way I make decisions, it has nothing to do with, I'm going to show you. I don't Mm -hmm. need you because it fills my soul and that's it. Oh God, that's beautiful. Yeah. So it's it's very different. Yeah. Oh no, it's a total different intent and... And without anger and without the upbringing and the cultural barriers, the societal barriers, Mm -hmm. it's almost like you're, you're being put down this one dimensional track, this little pinhole. This is the only option you have to making money or to getting Mm -hmm. your dreams versus spending those six months, letting them break down and move away. And and to the point where you forget. Yeah. Even the Latin American, that work hard ethic, you have to work hard in order to succeed and also hyper-educated because Mm -hmm. we can't take that away from you. You're going to have a high education, high career. Oh yeah. And that belief makes a really big difference in business. A huge difference. Explain that. So I go and hire my first business coach and I was met with reality. (laughs) <laughs> oh no the dreams <laughs> because i was like i want to start a business i want to help yeah. people i want to travel i want to leave corporate america like this isn't what i was meant to do i want to get back to my roots of when i was that loan officer and i was just moving with freedom i want to go back there mm-hmm. and so i remember her first question is okay great well like what do you offer and i was like well i don't know you tell me oh <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was like, I was like, just just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And she was like, Brenda, that's not, that's really not how it works. Like, you have to bring in a skill and you have to bring in a talent that you're able to offer and charge people. Like, that's just how business works. At this point, though, like, yeah. I I'm not doing good financially. I'm still with the, with the condo. I'm about thirty two thousand dollars in debt, and I'm pretty much living paycheck to paycheck. So she's actually the one um, who told me, why don't you get formally trained and certified because you're you're already interested in it. It being the hypnotherapy, NLP, 
which is neurolinguistic programming and timeline therapy. So I go to this training, which was seven days. And this is the seven days when all of my stuff was handled. All of it. The stuff with my dad, the stuff with my mom, the stuff with money, the stuff with love, everything changed. And three months later, I was completely out of my $32,000 worth of debt because my reality changed. The way I viewed money changed. The way I moved changed. Yeah. So then I go hire a new business coach. And at this point, I have the certification. I have the proper skills. I have the proper training. And within a month, we launched my first program. And within five months after that, I was quitting my corporate job. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Congratulations. Wow. You went from, I don't know what to do to, okay, I can quit my corporate job in, Mm -hmm. in less than a year. So you wanted to get back to your dreams and have that liberty, the freedom to live your life and not live to work, but live your life. On deepest unconscious level, understanding how you created the problems for yourself and how you got yourself out of those problems is how you start a business. Okay. Wow. Words of wisdom. That could take a lifetime sometimes, (laughs) unless you have this clarity. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to, but it can for a lot of people because they can't find the source of how these problems came to be. It takes it takes a lot of self reflection if you haven't done it. Yeah, it's, if you it's ha- tough. along in steps of in your life, if you're dealing with you know thirty, forty, fifty years of having to go back and go back and go back. Mm-hmm. So, what is this amazing business that you started that gave you the liberty, but also your clients' amazing clarity? Yeah. So. I launched my first signature program. It was called the Healing Experience in March of this year, 2022. And I was mainly focused on women who had no confidence because of their herpes diagnosis and women who were coming from toxic relationships that stemmed from the relationship with their dad or the non-relationship with their dad. That's what I was focused on. And I did really well. But it was really interesting because the women that I was attracting were also very ambitious and very business minded. Interesting. Yeah, it was it was really interesting. Like all of them were like, I just want freedom. I want to travel, Brenda. I, I want to just live my mm-hmm. life. I don't want to do this anymore. When I finally took a step back and said, okay, the yeah. universe is showing me something. I'm getting a lot of questions from business owners I think it's time I rebrand. But I fought it for so long because I was like, that isn't what I started my business for. I think whenever you're scaling a business or even you're starting a business, it you have to go internal first in order for the outward to reflect. Yes. Oh, say that again. I like that. You have to go inward first. You have to go inward first for the outward to reflect. When I say the inner work, what I mean is a self-reflection that you most likely never done before. Because what I use, the techniques that I'm formally trained in and certified in and that I actually certify other coaches in now is NLP, hypnosis, and timeline therapy. Okay. So (sighs) my business name is High Vibes Consulting. I have two offers. So where I work with entrepreneurs who want to either start or scale a business, that Mm -hmm. is for accelerate your success. That's where we deep dive into the root cause. That's where you come in and we do the inner work together that you may have been avoiding. Yeah. Or or maybe didn't even know that you needed to do that to start or scale a business. And so we do the inner work. I even teach you some NLP techniques that you can use for relationship building and for sales because sales is a whole different thing. So (laughs) there's so many people who think, 
oh, sales is like evil. Sales is manipulative. Sales is this. (laughs) When in reality, Mm -hmm. when you actually learn sales from an NLP perspective, you learn that sales is just your ability to listen. Mm. That's all sales is. The inner work isn't fun. (laughs) It's not fun. Yeah. Um, But it's necessary. Uh Every time I've done inner work, it's a really rough week for me. I'm crying a lot because I have to really understand what put me in that position. Mm -hmm. Why are you in the position that you are right now? Mm -hmm. And it's truly understanding and it's taking accountability for all the choices that you have made that have Mm -hmm. put you in the position that you are in. Because it's so easy to put it outward and say, well, the relationship with my dad, Mm -hmm. it's his fault. My upbringing, my economic upbringing, I saw my parents struggle through the 2008 financial crisis. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I have a bad relationship. And so when you push it outside of yourself, you can't do anything about it oh. because it's not your doing. Right. Oh, got it. So when you do the inner work, you're now going inwards mm-hmm. and you're saying, okay, yes, maybe my dad wasn't emotionally available to me. Yes, maybe I saw them struggle through the 2008 financial crisis. Yes, maybe I went through a really bad relationship. Yes, maybe all these things have happened. However, I am now taking accountability that all of the conscience and unconscious behaviors and choices that I have made have led me to where I'm at right now. And the minute someone makes that switch, it's not an easy switch, but the minute someone makes that switch, you now take control of your life and therefore you can take control of your business Mm -hmm. and your income. Oof. Cha-ching. Okay, but now I have questions because I'm following. Wait, am I getting free coaching? No. But (laughs) (laughs) I track all that inner work. But to me, it seems like it was a compounding. Like some of those things started early on and got you off track. And then choices made kept getting you further and further off track do you have to go back in that same chronological order? It's like excavating out. No. Okay. That's encouraging. Cause no. I feel like, Oh, that could take forever no. to get back there. You could just oh, absolutely dismiss not. it no. all at once. Just like, Oh, okay. Yes. I have the capacity yes. to look to my decision on anything presented to me. How do I react to it? How do I see it? So what I focus on in my coaching is I want to get to the root cause. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about and we don't dwell on the things that have happened um, in your life. Although, yes, they suck. I get it. Yeah, There's some bad things that have really happened and we're going to acknowledge that, Uh but we're not going to dwell on it because it's dwelling on it is not going to allow you to move forward, is it? No. It could sink you down further. Yes. So what you're going to do and what we would do is we would get to do the root cause of what started the spiral. Mm-hmm. And it typically happens between ages zero through seven. Yeah. Because that's when you are just a, a sponge. An innocent little, little sponge. You don't know. No, you, you don't, don't know. And you're just like an innocent little dreamer. And then people come in and say, you can't do that. Mm hmm. You're never going to make that amount of money. Oh, money's really hard to make. You have to work really, really (laughs) hard for money. And so then guess what happens? You take that in on an unconscious level. Yeah. And so every move that you make is, oh, I have to work really hard for money. Therefore, Mm -hmm. now that manifests Uh, in your business because now you don't want to automate your business because mm -hmm. in your mind, I have to work really hard for money. Mm-hmm. And if I automate it and if I'm able just to press one little button and I make $10,000, mm-hmm. I didn't work hard enough for it. Therefore, I'm not worthy of it. Oh, wow. Mind blown. 
mind blown. Yeah. And if you stay on that track of, I have to work really hard, then you're dismissing your personal life. You're dismissing all the other facets of happiness that you need to feel balanced and joyful. 100%. So what I focus on is I get down to the root cause. Okay. We, we always go to the root cause. Your unconscious mind is like, is storing all of your memories and all of your memories are categorized into, okay, all of these memories right here. Okay. These are all when I was angry. Okay. And this one right here is when I was, when I was sad. Okay. And this one right here, Yeah. this one right here. Yeah. Oh, this is when I was all hurt. Okay. So your unconscious mind stores every single memory you've ever had uh-huh. and it puts it in categories. So when you go into that little filing cabinet, and you go all the way to the very back. Yeah. You go, oh, okay, I, I want to get to the very beginning. Yeah. When was I first angry? And you understand that very first memory from a third party perspective. And you're able to experience what you were supposed to learn from that life experience. Even if you were just two years old. Uh huh. When you understand the life experience that you were supposed to take from that event, that entire filing cabinet completely changes. How? How does it change? What does that mean? So what happens is you now look at every single event in which you were angry completely differently. The event is still there, right? So like for me, for example, Mm -hmm. when I first found out I had herpes, Mm -hmm. I was sad. That's the emotion that I was feeling. Mm -hmm. But when I went to the root cause of when I first felt sadness ever in my life, which was generational, by the way, Mm -hmm. then every single significant emotional event in which I felt sadness changed because I let go the root cause. It's like you're in a garden. Let's say you plant this beautiful garden, right? right? And then all of a sudden, there's like these little weeds in this garden. And you're like, oh, God, but my garden's so beautiful. You yank out the weeds, you yank out the weed. But then they grow back. (laughs) And you're like, God, what's going on with my garden? And my garden's so beautiful. And then so then you go back and then you just yank out the weeds, yank out the weeds. But then they grow back again and again and again. But you go to the weed Mm -hmm. and you pull out every single root, the root cause, those weeds will never grow back in your garden again. Got it. Got it. And the way you view your garden is very different now. Mm -hmm. So the way you view your memories and all your life experiences when you go back to the root cause of why you first ever felt sadness or anger or why you first ever believed I have to work really hard for money. Right. Or I'm not worthy of money or love. Right. You view every Mm -hmm. single experience completely differently. So it clears the slate and you have now a more mature life experience to make new emotional memories of like, okay, what makes me sad now with my adult mind, with my life Mm -hmm. experience, also having a clear slate of not compounding it. So you're completely viewing life with freedom, of, yeah. but still have these emotions. I'm helping you release all of your emotions from your past. Everything. That got you to where you are that you don't right. like. The whole reason of coming to you, it's like, hey, I'm stuck mm-hmm. here. And it's because of these root causes and decisions that were made mm-hmm. from that or life experiences that you chose from that. Okay. Wow. That's powerful. Yeah, All of this happens within just three months. I mean, we, we get, we dig deep. (laughs) We pull out every Mm -hmm. single weed that is holding you back from what it is that you want. And because all of the obstacles are now removed, you have every choice in the world to create what it is that you really want. Every choice in the world is yours. You feel emotionally free. You feel free of your past. You feel free of the limitations. You feel free of the constant comparison of, oh, 
that, that person's doing so much better than me. No, that's not even, that's not even a thought anymore. The negative self-talk when you look at yourself in the mirror doesn't even happen anymore. So all of that energy that you were using before to do all of that, guess where that energy goes now? That goes mm-hmm. into your future. And your future mm-hmm. success. Yeah, that's it. It's the release of energy that gets, and your, even your brain thought that's getting trapped totally. in all these old feelings, old emotions, going, reflecting back. Oh, oh if that didn't happen, I would have X, Y, Z or regret or remorse, yeah. all of it. All that energy that you don't appreciate how much it takes out of your ability Mm -hmm. to to operate on any given day, let alone put new energy towards something that's actually going to get you further ahead, get you to where you want to be, live the life that you want. Oh, this is mind blowing. I love this. And you'll hear business coaches talk about this like brand clarity, right? And everyone's like, what does brand clarity mean? That just means... What do you offer? Right. Who are you speaking to? And do you have the confidence that you can deliver the results that you're promising? And for a lot of people starting, because they have not done the inner work, they are not yeah. able to answer those questions. I wasn't able to answer the, those questions. I was like, yeah. I don't know. You tell me. Just tell me how to start a business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then that third point, having the faith in yourself that you could deliver. Oh, that that's going to take most people off track. So that one program, you're both doing the work to get people clear of their past barriers, their unforeseen um, barriers that were built by society or cultural upbringing, but you're also then guiding them how to bring their business forward from that. It's like a one, two punch. That's a great program. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've had, I've had people like, naturally lose weight because you're no longer carrying the past baggage. I've had people attract really aligned partners who are Mm. now expecting within like three months, every single one of my clients always makes more money because we address a lot of the money stuff that comes Mm -hmm. a lot of from generational. Yes. A, A lot of it comes from generational. Yeah. And I really just help you master your mind because once you master your mind, everything, everything in life, I don't care if it's health, Hmm. business, career, fitness, spirituality, family, whatever it is, if you master your mind, life is a breeze. And it's amazing. Yeah. That's Mm -hmm. brilliant. I love it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is brilliant. Now, again, one thing we haven't brought up for any listeners, um, I had to look it up. NLP. What is mm-hmm. NLP? <laughs> it's it stands for neuro linguistic programming, and it's the study of excellence and using language, as you've seen. Uh huh. The yep. use of language to produce the desired results that either mm-hmm. you want or your clients want. Got it. In simple yeah. terms, that's what it is. What do you have as a vision for yourself later in life. Are we talking a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now? Let's go 20 years from now. 20 years from now. Okay. So I'll be 50 years old. Mm -hmm. At 50 years old, I will absolutely still have my business because this is something I'm incredibly passionate about. So passionate about. In 20 years, definitely. It'll definitely would have scaled and I'll have uh, people running my business for me. So I don't have uh-huh. to be working 15 hours a day. <laughs> I'll have my ranch where nice. I house my family. And I'll also have my high rise condos that in different cities that I get to go to yeah. with my own personal family, with my husband that I'll all have <laughs> and with the kids <laughs> that I'll have. And I'm just going to be living a life where I get to show my children the world and they get to experience different cultures and different languages and different foods and different people. Oh my gosh, this has been an amazing, amazing episode. Oh, this is mind blowing, literally, which I think is what was needed. So how can people find you? 
They can find me from my website, which is highvibesconsulting.com, or they can find me on Instagram or TikTok. And it's just Brenda period Emil. And you can okay. DM me and you can say, let's go. I'm ready. Everybody's going to be so ready. And I will say, let's get it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's get it, ladies. 2023. I Oh, I am owning it. Okay, I will meet you anywhere in the world that you're going to be because I'm ready. <laughs> I'm beyond ready. Oh, my goodness. That's awesome. We will have all of that information uh, in the show notes on the episode so people can click through and then that will lead them to your information. We'll have it in the website, on the transcript, in the article. This was such a powerful literal session. I, it's just the clarity of even understanding the power behind what you do. It already feels like, oh, there's some place to take this. There's some place to take this and get rid of it. Yeah. Awesome. You do not need to carry it and you do not <sighs> need years to let it go. Thank you so, so much for taking the time to share this with us. Absolutely. This is powerful. And what a great way to be ending the year with this kind of gratitude and knowledge that we can, with the help of you and have hope for ourselves to just revel in what we see our life being and scale that business or start that business. You know, yeah. Be successful in that business. Be successful in life. Thank you very, very much. We appreciate your intelligence, your skill, your vivacity. It's so joyful. And we Absolutely. are definitely going to be looking forward to 2023 in a mindset you didn't even know you had, I tell you. Okay, ladies, we have one more episode this year and we are going to put it to bed. Tune in next week to get into that Christmas mood with stories of traditions around the holiday and a surprise resource that I didn't even know existed until my ever listening phone put up a sponsored ad on Instagram. It's a first for me to appreciate the intrusion of sponsored ads, but this one was definitely a fun surprise. As long as you are all in that gifting mood of the season, and this one is free to you, please follow the LifeLinks podcast and share it with your friends. On Apple Podcasts, tap the three dots and tap follow and share. On Spotify, tap downloads so you don't miss any amazing, life-changing episodes with our fabulous guests like today. Stay safe out there in this wintry weather. It's getting a little treacherous. Get cozy with the ones you love and come listen to our winter solstice episode next week with all the cozy Christmas feels. Step into your truth, ladies. Ciao! Really appreciate the time you take to rate and review the podcast. Get the backstory and what you've heard here today and reach out to us at thelinks.com. That's L N double X. Because it's about time, it's about us. Stay in the groove on our social media at LifeLinks and get ready to make your move, ladies. Viva!